We would have everyone please stand and unite in the singing of the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at twilight's last gleaming, whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bones were singing in air came through through the night that
display its history. Heraldry is as old as the human race, and carrying of banners has been a custom among all peoples in all ages. These banners usually contain some concept of the life or government of those who fashioned them. The evolution of the American flag marks the progression of the government of the American people. Of the founding of Jamestown, from the founding of Jamestown in Virginia in 1607 until 1775, the flag of England was the flag of the peoples of America. In 1775, the pine tree flag was adopted for all colonial vessels, and this was the banner carried by the Continental Forces in the Battle of Bunker Hill. The Southern colonies from 1776 to 1777 used the snake flag. In the latter part of 1775, the Continental Congress appointed a committee to consider the question of a single flag for all 13 colonies. That committee recommended a a design of 13 alternate stripes of red and white with an azure field in the upper corner bearing the red cross of St. George and the white cross of St. Andrew. John Paul Jones, the senior lieutenant of the flagship Elfrick, hoisted this flag to the masthead on December 3, 1775. And one month later, it was raised over the headquarters of George Washington in Cambridge, Massachusetts, in compliment, as he wrote, to the United Colonies. The flag called the Continental Colors and the Grand Union was never carried in the field by the Continental Land Forces, but it was used by the Navy as an exclusive engine and was the first American flag to receive a salute of honor, a salute of 11 guns from the Fort of Orange in the Dutch West Indies. In response to a general demand for a banner more representative of our country, the Congress in June 14, 1777 provided that the flag of the United States be 13 stripes of alternating red and white and that the Union be 13 stars with a blue field representing a new constellation. It is generally believed that in May or June of 1776, a committee, committee consisting of George Washington, Robert Morris, and George Ross commissioned Betsy Ross a Philadelphia Quakers to make a flag from the rough design they left with her. It is said that she suggested that the star should be five points rather than six. This starry banner was first flown at Fort Stanwix, called Fort China at the time, near the city of Rome, New York, on August 3, 1777 and was under fire three days later at the Battle of Warsaw, August 6, 1777, during a British and Indian attack. The first official salute to the Stars and Stripes was given on February 14, 1778, by France on the French coast when the Ranger, under command of John Paul Jones, was saluted by the French fleet. This flag was carried by the ranger, was made by the young women of Portsmouth, New Hampshire from stripes of their best colored silk dresses and the white wedding gown of a recent bride. And it is said that this same ranger's flag was flown by Jones's ship, the Von Hom Richard. It is a, in its thrilling fight by moonlight upon the high seas with the British frigate Serapis. When the Serapis struck her colors, the immortal fame of John Paul Jones was ensured as the intrepid defender of the youthful republic. 
The original 13 Stars and Stripes represented the original 13 colonies. In 1795, two additional Stars and Stripes were added to represent the admission to the Union of Vermont and Kentucky. Under this banner, the 15 Stars and Stripes was fought the War of 1812 and was the site of it flying over Fort McHenry on September 14, 1814, that inspired Francis Scott Key to write what was to become our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. Miss Margaret Young, who cut the stars for that particular banner, was the mother of Henry Sanderson, the grand global ruler of the Order of Elks in 1884. The Congress on April 14, 1818, adopted a resolution that on and after July 4th, 1818, the number of stripes should be 13, and the blue field should carry one star for each of the 20 states in the Union, and that a new star should be added for each state thereafter admitted. Since 1818, there has been no change in the flag design except that 28 new stars are added before July 4th, 1912. And this flight of 48 stars flew over the nation for 47 years until just before the Vietnam War. On July 4th, 1959, a star was added for Alaska, our first non-connected state. And a year later, Hawaii, our island state, added a 50th star. Our present flag, 50 stars and 13 stripes, it is now accompanied by the POW MIA flag to recognize the flight and demise of a special group of our armed services. Those who were prisoners of war or still remain missing in action. Please stand and salute our flag. As this emblem is first in our hearts as loyal Americans, so it is close to our altar as loyal elves. The gentle breezes with lingering, careless kisses, the folds of no flag which can compare with image beauty. There is no such red in budding roses, in falling leaves, or sparkling wine, no such white in April blossoms, in crescent moons, or mountain snow. No such blue in women's eyes, in ocean's depths, or heaven's dome. And no such panditary of clustering of stars and streaming lights in all the spectrums of the sea and sky. Please be seated. Our flag is at once a history, a declaration, and a prosperity. It represents the American nation as it was at its birth. It speaks for what it is today, and it holds the opportunity for the future to add other stars to the glorious consolation. The benevolent and protective order of the Alps is the first and only fraternal body to require formal observation of Flag Day. In July of 1908, the Grand Lodge, this order, at Dallas, Texas, then assembled, provided for the annual nationwide observance of Flag Day. On the 14th of June in each year, a mandatory upon each local lodge of the order. This unique distinction as the strongest promoter of Flag Day is most becoming to the Order of Elks. This order is distinctively American. Only American citizens are eligible to join it and has no foreign affiliation. It has linked its destiny with the destiny of our country and made this flag its symbol of self-dedication to God, to countrymen, and fellow men. The Stars and Stripes, flag of the United States of America, the worldwide hope of all who under God would be free to live and do His will. Upon its folds is written the story of America, the epic of the mightiest and noblest in all history. In the days when people of the old world groveled in abject homage to the heresy 
of the divine right of kings, a new constellation appeared in the western skies, the stars and stripes, symbolizing the divine right of all to life, liberty, happiness, and peace under endowment by their creator. To what man or woman is given words adequate to tell the story of the building of this nation? That immortal story is written in blood, sweat, in heroic deeds of unremitting toil, in clearing the primeval forests and in planting the vast prairies where once the coyote and buffalo roamed. Onward swept the nation, spanning wide rivers, leaping vast mountain ranges, leaving in its path villages and farms, factories and cities, till at last this giant nation stood astride the continent from the Atlantic to the Pacific. This is the heritage of the people of the United States. It has been repurchased by each succeeding generation and must be re-won again, again, and again, until the end of time, lest it too shall pass like the ancient empires of Greece and Rome. The price of liberty is eternal vigilance. What was won at Lexington and Concord and Bunker Hill had to be repurchased at Ticonderoga and Yorktown. What John Paul Jones achieved upon the high seas in the War of Independence had to be repurchased by Commodore Perry on Lake Erie in the War of 1812. The prestige of Admiral Dewey's victory at Manila Bay in 1898 was re-won by the naval battles in the seas about the far distant islands of the Pacific after the sneak attacks upon Pearl Harbor in Manila in 1941 had summoned our country to assume its role in World War II. What our troops achieved under the Stars and Stripes at Chateau Thierry and Flanders in World War I, their sons were required to repurchase in World War II in the bloody trek across northern Africa, on the beachheads of Europe, and in the Battle of the Bulge. The flag our American men raised at Iwo Jima was the same flag later raised in the defense of Incheon, Busan, and Pork Chop Hill in far off Korea. Then another generation under the same flag led to stem the threat of communism in far off Vietnam. Our young people were again called to carry our flag in the defense of a free world in the actions of Grenada and Panama. Willingly, our brave men and women carried our flag and the honor of the American people into the battle of Operation Desert Storm. And who among us will ever forget the sight of firefighters raising our flag over the ruins of the World Trade Center, the military personnel draping our flag on the side of the Pentagon, or the citizens of Somerset County, Pennsylvania, placing our flag near the site where brave Americans died fighting the hijackers of flight number 93. No other symbol could have offered such comfort as we still today endure the horrors of that day. Today, American armed forces carry our flag into the villages of Iraq, the mountains of Afghanistan, and the jungles of the Philippines and wherever terrorism may reside. Their struggle against the sponsors of terrorism is the hardest battle yet, and this threat to our nation and to our way of life is certainly as great a challenge as our flag has ever seen. The resurgence of patriotism since September 11, 2001 has rekindled respect for our flag. Today, we see the Star Spangled Banner wherever we turn on homes, businesses, automobiles, and billboards. Such displays simulate our love for our nation and for what it stands. They remind us of the sacrifices being made by the men and women of our armed forces around the world. 
and they are a tribute to the heroes of the police and fire departments the nation over. The greatest significance of this flag, however, lies in the influence it has in the hearts and minds of millions of people. It has weighed over the unparalleled progress of a nation in developing democratic institutions, scientific and technological knowledge, education, and culture. It has served as a beacon for millions of poor and oppressed refugees abroad and stands as a promise that the underprivileged will not be forgotten. What is the meaning of the flag of the United States? There can never be a definitive answer to that question. There are people in this world who see it as a symbol of imperialism. Others see it as a destiny of the people. The reference to these and similar views of the flag was resolved by Woodrow Wilson when he said, this flag, which we honor and under which we serve, is the emblem of our unity, our power, our thought, and shape of this nation. It has no other character than that which we give it from generation to generation. The choice is ours. Only love, true love of our fellow man, can create peace. The emblem and token of that love is the stars and stripes, the symbol of the American way of life. Our Father's God to thee, author of liberty, to thee we sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, great God, our King. I now declare this service closed.